Hey guys! Today we're going to be filming this look. I wanted to do something very fallish and natural and something I would wear like fall every day but like a natural glam, you know what I'm saying? I also have mascara right here. Oh shoot. Very fall, very like matching the olive tones, matching the the outfit, you know what I'm saying? We try some new ColourPop stuff, we try some new physician formula stuff, I'm trying a new foundation. I'm going on the cruelty free train, I'm jumping on it, I'm not getting off. You will see me using products that are companies that test on animals, but I'm just working through the product I already have. I'm not buying any more of that kind of stuff, so that's just a heads up from me. If you want to see more of these kinds of videos, you want to see more fall tutorials, because this is my favorite time of year, like this video and subscribe to my channel. Helps me a lot. And let's get into it. This is a product of needing uh, my hair done and not washing it and not having uh, money to go get it colored again. It looks like a little doorknob. So I actually just filmed another video before this, took off my makeup, and I'm filming again because I love you guys. And I'm putting my face through it. So I'm going to be using the Ulo Hendrickson moisturizer. This is a very, 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 very thick moisturizer. It's thick with three C's and a Q. For a while, I thought this moisturizer was breaking me out, but... I really want another coffee, but I will have a full-fledged panic attack if I have another coffee. I can't do that. You will be seeing me use um, products that companies do test on animals, and I'm just kind of working through the product I already have. I won't be able to, like, repurchase it. <laughs> repurchasing any of these but I kind of hate how good this is I have to look in to see if if anyone knows let me know I'm pretty sure nude sticks is cruelty free and if that is the case I'll buy their version of that product even though it's considerably more expensive so basically what I've been doing is kind of just like tapping that out on my face and that really just gets rid of the texture also I have in the back oh I, I blew it out but it's the blueberry blueberry maple pancakes candle by Bath and Body Works <gasps> I don't know who actually cares about what I'm talking about but um and right now I'm just kind of taking a brown eyeshadow from the Milani Bold Obsessions peel it and I'm dotting on kind of like fake freckles before I put my foundation on. This is just like a new technique I've been trying. But to give you more of like that natural freckle look instead of it being like, oh, she put on fake freckles. You don't want it to look like that. And I'm going to go ham on the nose because I'm just going to cover up with foundation anyways. Oh my god. So this pretty much is just going to be my cute little fall look. I'm going to go out for coffee in like an hour. So I think it'd be cute to like do like, you know, a little eyeshadow, a little, little look on the eyes, a couple like orangey tones, you know, like some full tones. And you already know what palette I use for my full tones. You already know what palette I use for my full tones. I think I might use these together. Uh, we know this is a uh, sacred ground on my channel. Latte palette, man. My favorite fall shade. Oh, wow. Just like yummy fall shades. Um, I'm going to go in with pumpkin spice. And I think I want to do like an all over lid, like orangey explosion of like fiery color. And then what else do I want to do? I think I want to do like a pinky fuchsia. So I think I'm going to pair that. Ooh, I haven't really used this orange. Maybe like use this and this together too. I don't know. We're just gonna like play. Oh, hello. I've been really liking the ColourPop concealer. I am so late on the bandwagon. I placed a huge ColourPop order and we're gonna be diving into those shades today. Oh, oh yeah, I can't. RCMA, no color powder on the eyelids. B, why does it look like I've been punched in the face? I'm going in with the shade Pumpkin Spice from the Latte palette. Really just use any like pumpkin-y orange you have. Not a peach, okay? I mean, you could. It's, there's really no rules, but. And I'm gonna bring this all over the lid. I am being so messy with this. All right, and if you wanna know what I'm talking about, I filmed a muck and I talked about where I want my channel to 
go. Well, the whole cruelty-free vegan uh, thing and what I, my opinions are on companies that do test on animals. I mean, I'm sure that uh, opinion is quite clear since I'm not using or I mean repurchasing products that do test on animals because I think it's uh, kind of disgusting. But if you want to watch that whole video, it'll any any video I ever mention will be linked in the description box so you can check it out. But I bring it into the crease and then I lay that fluffy brush flat and I kind of drag it onto my lid because I want that all over monochromatic orangey experience, if you will. I think I'm going to go in with Real Garb, which is the orange in the Modern Renaissance. In the formulation of the Modern Renaissance, ooh, that looks sickening. Are even softer if that was even possible. I think I'm gonna bring this up kind of high. Taking a matte white and I'm running that below the eyebrow. You can carve that out. And I'm kind of like fanning that out into more of a V shape. This would be really perfect if I did a wing liner. But the last look I just did. Oh my god, my wing liner. I'm not on a wing liner kick today. It did not turn out. I think I'm gonna go into the shade Golden Ochre in the Anastasia palette and kind of just soften the crease as much as I can because this is looking real dramatic real fast which is fine but I kind of wanted to do something a little more like every day I mean I would wear this every day and I constantly go back between like this little wet and wild brush little smudgy brush if you are someone who gets carried away with your blending and brings up the shadows just too high that's a great 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 trick actually I'm gonna go in with the shade hazelnut right here and I'm going to drag that on my lower lash line I'm actually gonna dip into the Disney Colourpop palette and I'm gonna use this like slate color right here I have a feeling I'm gonna get so much use out of this color and the reason I say that it looks so boring but I don't have anything like this in my collection and if you watch makeup by Ariel he likes to shade in this area Kind of give the eyes a more almond shape. I normally don't fill my eyebrows, but today I'm going to because I want to do like a very like fluffy looking brow, you know. I'm kind of bringing that shadow into the eyebrow up here. And the way I do a bushy brow, I kind of take my pencil. This is the NYX 6666 Precision Brow Pencil. It's the one with the fatter. Uh, more square head. Oh, rip! A little like chunk just broke off. That was my fault. So I'm gonna create the shape I want for my eyebrow. I kind of start filling in in the middle of the eyebrow. Like I'm not creating a shape down here. I'm not going way up here, not way down here, but literally just stroking where my brow hairs already are. I want to make them look naturally hairy i'm just coloring in where i have hair i'm not drawing any fake hairs and the area i want to be the darkest is the arch so that's going to create our shape so i'm going to start making that pretty intent and i kind of want this front area of the brow to be dark i don't want this area to be dark but this middle area and now i'm starting to go in and actually like draw hairs where i don't have them but when i do that i do that very sparingly because i don't want them to look too crazy. Okay, and now I'm gonna start creating some fake hairs towards the front so I have that nice gradient. For the rest, okay, we're gonna be using just a little e.l.f. definer brush and I'm gonna go in, I'll actually just use this mocha shade, it's just like a brown, normal brown from the latte palette. You can use any eyeshadow you have. And I'm gonna kind of fluff that in and make my brows even darker but I'm not being, I guess the whole key to this little mini brow toot in the middle of this uh, actual toot <laughs> is to make everything look nice and fluffy. And I'm not really doing anything super precise and I'm kind of just fluffing my hairs forward. And I start the product at the arch and then I move in and then I move out. And I do that because that's the area I feel like looks the nicest when it's the darkest and you don't want a ton of intense color at the front because I feel like that looks very you can look very angry and to top this all off I'm going to use the Sony Kashuk brow gel I think I'm going to go in with the shade Macchiato 
right there. And I'm gonna lift the brow. So I want this to be all matte. It's just like that little kiss of a shimmer. I'm going to inner corners here. I've been kind of playing around with this foundation and I really just don't know how I feel about it. It's so strange. So like, I didn't even understand how to open this at first. I thought it was maybe like a pump. And then this thing showed up and I was like, what are you? So when you twist it, it's a doe foot applicator. I have a problem with doe foot applicators because I am a gal, like 80% out of the gals that suffers with acne. When you have a doe foot applicator, all of that um, zit, all the zitty gunk is going right back into your applicator, right back into your bottle once you're done applying it to your face. This foundation is cruelty free and vegan and drugstore. You're welcome. So I really want this to work. And Kathleen Lights was the one that kind of turned me on to this product. One thing I will say, I've worn this maybe like four times now. It sucks with a beauty blender. It's so strange with a beauty blender because normally how I'll apply a foundation, I'll take a little brush like this and kind of pat it all out. And then I'll go back in with a beauty blender and I will dab over my whole face. If I go in with a beauty blender and I tap it out, it will look like it takes away all of the product I put down. And over my texture, it looks very dry. It's really clinging to my dry spots. Like my fingers. But it's very like radiant and dewy, but not crazy over the top. I'm going to spritz my face here. And normally I would use a beauty blender and like start to work in the product but I really can't do that. I'm out of my makeup wipes and I dug and I dug and I dug through my stuff and I found these little makeup wipes that I bought when I was in Canada and they uh, suck. I'm using the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. This is a new one for me. I don't know how I feel about it at all. How about I do, how about I do a wear test after this? Like we'll do maybe like a five hour wear test and see how we're looking. And I kind of bring the concealer down more here. I don't bring it very close to my eyes. I know it looks like I'm applying a lot. I do bring it down lower and then I blend up to my eyes. I have under eye bags, I got it all. And if I put it really close to my eyes, it's just going to crease even worse. So I like to put it lower and then kind of work that product up. And I mentioned this in my last video, but I put water in this like NYX setting spray bottle. And if you hate going to the bathroom to wet your beauty blender, just put some water in a spritz bottle. It will save your life. Lazy queen over here. I just don't like that, okay? If I like this concealer, it's a good concealer because I am Crease City. The only concealer that I've found that doesn't really crease on me, that gives me the coverage I want, is the Flower Beauty Concealer. Um, Tarte Shape Tape creases on me. Don't like it. Maybelline Ager one. I used to like it, but then I used the Flower Beauty one, and like, it doesn't even compare. And I'm also bringing that concealer up to create this like, V shape I have with the eyeshadow. Theoretically, you should be able to tap it on that line and make that line look less harsh between the eyeshadow and the concealer. And something I do with my concealer too, I take my fingers, I like to get out all the creases before I even think about setting it. Because if you already have creases before you set it, those creases are going to be cemented. It's like, if I have this many creases at 22, like, what am I going to look like when I'm, like, 30? I also recently ordered a few things from Dish. Not Wish. Dish. But I bought a few things from this website. And then in the fine print, it says, can you, they only offer exchanges. Only exchanges. No returns for anything. That's fine. It's annoying, but it's fine. Um, so like, let's say I'm going to exchange something. Well, you can't exchange it if it's on sale, but 80% of your website is on sale. And then I was thinking too, like, shouldn't websites kind of have, I mean, because consumers are dumb, like myself, like maybe an algorithm that says, oh, if you accidentally order two, oh, I see, uh, Janet put two sweaters in her basket of the exact same color and style and size. Maybe she did that on accident. So I think, you know, like when you're sending an email and the email says, if you say in the email, I will attach a link about da 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 da, and then you forget to attach a link. And the email will say, 
you forgot to attach a link. Do you want to attach a link? Yes, I do want to attach a link, you know? So wouldn't it be cool if like websites had that and you, it could say, I see you put two of the same lipstick in your cart. Do you want two lipsticks in your cart? Is that that hard? No. I'm using this Pixie Chloe Morello blush palette. Ooh, this is pretty, my friends. I don't talk about this. I kind of do blush and everything off camera because it's kind of boring. But this is so, like Pixie blushes and highlights are so underrated. I'm using this like berry shade. I think will look really cool with the orange. And I'm keeping it quite high and then just grazing it on the apples of the cheeks. I can't say apples of the cheeks without talking in an accent. I'm gonna use the Pixie Aspen Ovard collab. This is in the shade Santorini. Ah! <laughs> Santorini Sunset. I brought this with me when I went to Greece and I was in Santorini and I felt like the coolest person ever. And anytime someone was like, what highlighter are you wearing? I'm like, it's Pixie Santorini Sunset. And we're watching the Santorini Sunset. Uh, peaked in life. Everything's downhill from that experience. Everything is downhill. So I'm taking, this is almost like a little precision highlighting brush. I'm going to keep it high and kind of wiggle it left and right. And then once I get to the apple with the cheek, I'm just going to graze it ever so slightly. So I get a very natural but pretty highlight that's not going to uh, murder you. Blinding's fine. But I don't want to be murdered by my highlight. I think this is something that has changed so much in my routine, how I highlight. Because in the past, I was I went so ham. Like, so ham with highlight. I can all get carried away, you know what I'm saying? But the older I get, and the more uh, textured and disgusting and dry my skin gets, and the more I look back on videos of myself even as of recently, and I just don't notice how carried away I'm getting. Oh my god, like... So the last little step I've been liking doing, this is also by Physicians Formula. This is their bronze booster, and this right here, oh god, they're chunky packaging. This is like a shimmery, shimmery, shimmery bronzer. And to kind of br blend that bronzer in more with the highlight, I'm just going to take this and put it at the high points. Mesh that into the highlight. This is the very top, and I also like running this on the forehead. I was actually working, and one of my tables asked me if I meant to do that to my forehead, and she's like, it looks like a bump. And I'm like, what does that mean? But she said, oh good, I just don't know if uh, people calling my forehead bumpy. She goes, your forehead looks so attractive. She wasn't talking British. But I've never had a forehead compliment. Honestly can't leave the house without a, bron without a bronzed forehead. I feel naked. I'm gonna be using this ColourPop eyeshadow in the shade Teaspoon, and it's this beautiful green. I can't say this enough, but if you have green eyes, you will love this eyeliner. It is so pretty, so unique, stays on the eyes all day. And I just think with the orange and even like the colors we're wearing right now, it will just make the eyes pop. If you can't afford the Marc Jacobs eyeliners or you're a sane human being that doesn't want to spend $30 on an eyeliner that probably costs about 70 to 80 cents to produce, the ColourPop eyeliners, man. And something I've been doing lately to my makeup, because I tend to go a little uh, ham, with the bronzer that is not a natural bronze. I take just like a regular powder, this is just the Maybelline Fit Me powder, and I take a brush and kind of just start to diffuse that edge. This also helps because I have texture in this reason, this region and this region. So bringing a little bit of powder so it's like pretty finely milled along that area just looks really nice and airbrushed. I take that berry shade that we used as blush and I am just gonna run this across the nose right here and right here and I think this just makes the face because we put all that like white translucent powder down here and that can make you look so washed out and just take a lot of life out of your skin. So I like this to just like 
give you that sun-kissed look. I like bring the blush across the nose very messily. That highlight and just bring it right here and boop it on the nose, you know. And chin. I'm just gonna go in with some eyeliner. Not eyeliner, eye um <laughs> Mascara! I actually just stabbed my eyelid with Mascara. I've been filming for 45 minutes. That's disgusting. Can't wait to edit this. Got the shade better off. I accidentally bought uh, two. The shade Mind Trick. Me when people say like you have a million shades of the same color. They're different. I will say the ColourPop Luxe Lippies though. Like they feel heavy. Like they feel high quality. That looks like trash on me. No, 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 no. This one I know is like a really good color. Okay, I like this a lot. That's what I wanted. These are nice. It's just like the formula is nice, but those colors, man, like I bought three lipsticks of that's like essentially the same color and they look like trash on me. I mean, nothing against ColourPop. It's just those colors look so orange. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this look. I'm probably going to do one check-in at the end and let you know how everything, mostly the foundation and the concealer, I'm most curious about. I already had a flop because I got some mascara, like, right here, and I'm not happy about that. But I'm going to check in later and keep you posted. Hey. It's future Fiona. <laughs> All right, this is the skin situation. You know what? Let me welcome you into my life. Come on. Stairs. Painting that looks like rainbow donuts. Don't know why. I don't know. Don't. Donut. I don't know why it's there. <laughs> I'm about to edit. I'm sitting here eating some gluten-free, dairy-free mac and cheese, which is so darn good. I don't think the skin looks bad. I actually think it looks quite good. Um, I think this is a really good long wearing foundation. I wish it was a little more coverage. Any foundation I can't like tap out with a beauty blender makes me feel naked. So it's good. It's not my favorite. What do we think of the concealer? This is actually three, this is actually six hours. Um, I think the concealer is pretty good. I think the concealer is actually Bomb. The liquid lip is gone. Like, absolutely gone. That's the one thing. The, that liquid lip is good for the drugstore. It's not super long wearing. If you eat anything, it will come off and you do have to reapply it, but that's fine. I will see you in the next one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what your favorite cruelty-free or cruelty-free and vegan, that's even better, um, foundations are because I'm struggling. My favorites are Maybelline and L'Oreal, and I'm trying to replace them. I'm trying to be a good noodle, an ethical consumer. <laughs> so let me know what your favorites are, if you got any, in the comments, because I'm struggling. Bye!